Carolyn Holzman, and this is Confessions of an SEO. Do not worry, you've come across the least SEO SEO podcast on the planet. No interviews, no FOMO, just a place to relax and feel that it's okay that you're an SEO. And if you're a business owner trying to figure out SEO, maybe you've hired an agency, well, here's where you're going to get the skinny on Google. And I should just ask you to be open to accept the reality that what incentivizes Google and its business model has nothing to do with your business succeeding, despite what you think, despite what they've said. So I hope in some way that what you hear here will improve your relationship between the agency and your business and you so that you see that we're all on the same team. Welcome to season four, episode three of Confessions of an SEO. Hi there. It is nice to be back and I like the schedule and putting out the new episodes on Tuesdays. This past weekend, actually from the previous Thursday to Sunday, I uh, participated with the Agency Fast Track virtual conference I was telling you about um, last couple of uh, weekends, weeks. So uh, it was no pitch. Uh, The keynote speakers were as they needed to be, inspiring and setting the tone for the day. Uh, The topics ranged from AI in general to how to use it to streamline some SEO processes to general SEO to agency matters and sales. Now it was all hosted by Lisa Parzial and she also was her own MC. It was fantastic. Uh, Her agency is Portside Marketing and she even had some of her team come on and talk about what they do in house. And just to give you a taste of what it was like, um, we even were talking about, you know, what if websites as we know them cease to be and something else takes their place? I know, right? Isn't that like crazy? Um, But, you know, as I was there, I realized that this might be just the right time to do what I thought I would probably not speak about on this show. Um, There's so much negativity around it. And I think it's because it's likely tinged with a little bit of fear. You know, hell, sometimes when I see what it can do, I am not at all certain, you know, that by the time I am a full-time garlic farmer, that what I do today is even going to be a thing by then. Now, so you guessed it, I am going to talk about artificial intelligence, AI. Now, I know Everyone right now is thinking, oh, that's how you can fire your writers and create content for sites and put them on and you're going to rank great. You know, and I suppose a lot of people use it that way, but I think we're going to have to look a little harder at it uh, because I think it's way more than that. From what I can gather, there are people not going to be making a living, but are actually making a living using it to create images, videos, automating their workflow, using it to manage data without necessarily having to know all those formulas, like what you know in a spreadsheet, you know, it's just tell it to make me a picture with this data. So there's always going to be people in certain fields that are going to have to evolve. And I think marketing is one of those fields, has always been one of those fields, right? Um, it's not like, um, marketing hasn't evolved over the last hundred years, uh, or more. So we're going to have to figure out, you know, how to create more value as someone who understands how AI can help businesses make money. And I, I think change or having to change is something that, and Please hear me. I'm not trying to say this to scare any of us, but I think we are going to have to believe that we're more than what we do, right? We have to believe that as marketers, and we are marketers, even if we're in technical SEO, but as marketing changes, we will be changing with it. And I think we're at a glass half full and glass half empty position. And when we're here, I say, go for the higher frequency, 
right? Because it is just way too easy and it takes no effort for someone to be negative and destructive in their fearful outlook. You know, just look at people in our own industry. But the real power is in the ability of choosing what we're going to bring to a world as human beings where people are going to start interacting with large language models, no matter who trained it. And for instance, they may be talking into one right now to create software that does what either used to take a long time or used to be outsourced. Now, let's sit with that for just a moment. Because if that scares the bejesus out of you, hang in with me. Because my question is, what if there was value in all of us being part in such a world where all of that was a standard operating procedure? You know, don't try and think it. Like, don't try and use your brain and and let your brain tell you, oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay, just forget about that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about imagine, play a game, what if. You know, so feel it more than think it. And I guess the real question is, can we both love and trust ourselves and be in a world where artificial intelligence becomes more standard. Because, I mean, where we are right now, the average person doesn't have a clue about what's coming. You know, it's a tantalizing topic on, I don't know, the evening news, but for the average day-to-day folks, um, many of them are still on the phone with automated customer service screaming the word operator. Now, A lot of you know I'm a huge movie fan, Um, but first it was TV. Now, I love Star Trek, the original version of Star Trek. I grew up with it. Um, It was such a treat when I was allowed to stay up late and watch it with my brothers. Now, other people have mentioned this before, so I know this information isn't groundbreaking, but I just want us to think about it. Um, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, He basically created this world where the Federation was supposed to be a utopia. And instead of working for profit, everyone in the Federation was working to become a better person. Okay, hang on with me because there's money involved here. (laughs) Okay. Um, As a kid, I was always fascinated how they used computers on the show. Now, I had no practical idea what a computer was, except on TV, it could take up a whole room. And on the show, it it certainly seemed to know a lot. And uh, it was kind of that experience, like what I watched and remember about the show, how they would interact with the computer was very similar to when we're talking or typing prompts into one of these chat models. So what if in the direction we're going, we still, of course, need to do what we do today. But as we do that, what if we just considered the possibility of adding in AI in our process now, even just a teeny, teeny little bit, and ask, you know, how would we increase our value to whomever we're going to be in the future? You know, this, I think, is what it feels like when you're on the cutting edge. Ouch! You know, there's going to be people who will still, you know, want to move into this future at some point. But as we're looking at it right now, we have all that time between now and then to get familiar with it. You know, that we can be the ones that can bring it to our future customers and clients. Now, I remember when I was first getting into SEO, the big secret that all the gurus were keeping to themselves was that they were already offering SEO services to businesses. Now, that's how long I've been in this industry, when businesses didn't have SEO companies. Um, So these gurus, they were advising people to write eBooks, PDFs we call them now, 
about some topic that we may have known a lot about or paid someone who already knew to write it for us. And and then we would learn how to rank um, for that particular general topic and create people who would buy that PDF and then we would continue to market to them and so forth and so on. Now, at that time, people were not buying a lot of products online printed catalogs. That was pretty much how it was done. People were scared to use their credit cards on actual websites. I remember back in, oh, it's a long time ago, um, 1997, when I convinced my husband we should buy patio furniture online. It was like half off what we could find locally <laughs> and, and have it delivered in boxes to our home. It was just like mind blowing. And I ended up calling the company to give them our credit card over the phone instead of putting it through the computer because it was like, no, don't do that. So um, going back to like when I was starting to get into the digital um, marketing. So while we were sitting there learning about newsletter marketing and eBooks and these guys who were teaching us were already providing SEO services to businesses. And it took a long time before we all realized that there were businesses out there that could use these same services. And instead of horse care books, there was more than that, but that's all I remember. There was plumbing and roofing and dentistry and pool repair, and in my case, CD duplication. Well, I could be wrong, but right now, this time has all the feel of that. And I think it, um, if we're ready to imagine ourselves as essential and take steps now to be ready, and it, it doesn't likely matter which door we step into. I don't think we need to ask anybody's permission, get anybody's okay, just go ahead and go for it and just learn a little something. No matter what it is, just a little bit of AI into what we're already doing. I think we're going to be more than all right. We're going to be prepared. We're going to be ready. For instance, let's say if a client says, I need a new website, and we provide them with something, and again, I think it's going to be bigger than this, but let's say like a, a chat bot that's already been trained on every question a prospect has had in the past. It's on their website so that the prospect actually finds, finds their website because it was optimized for that question in their city, and they can convert that lead for that business. Because that's ultimately what we do. So if we're marketers, businesses are always going to market. So what do we care what format that marketing is in? Sure, we may have to learn something new, but I don't know about you, but I love that. Well, that's it for this week. Please remember to take the uh, survey uh, short, it's less than two minutes. Uh, if you're feeling generous about helping, please go and leave a review somewhere about Confessions. It's made its way into over 100 countries and the audience is growing. Thank you so much. I'll post links to the tools I use in my forensic work. Um, I specifically recommend Cora if you want to save 25% on a subscription. Um, you can use that link. And uh, I also have discovered a new Search Console tool that's a Chrome plugin, and it helps to automate some of the tedious uh, manual activities that we do in Search Console. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you to the supporters of Confessions. And I'm I'm really glad you like this type of SEO content and stories and you aren't too shocked by a little Google bashing. So if there are any topics you'd like me to cover in 2024, let me know. You can email confessions at American Way Media or text me. Yes, there is an actual text number for the show. It is 737 225 8 228 and I'll put it in the description. Thanks again until next week. I'll see you in the SERPs.